somebody and tell them say it's true I am a child of God oh it's true oh it is so true I'm a child of God I'm a child of God I'm a child of God you may be seated I am a child of God a child of God they shouldn't have sang that this morning. I'm stuck now. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Ooh. Well, open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter number two. We in the home stretch, and I'm telling you, this has been a camp meeting like no other. I'm telling you, the right crew has been in here this week. <laughs> Nothing against all the rest of the people. It's probably those online been pulling too, though. But I'm telling you, this has been, this has been something. And I want to just thank my wife and I want to just thank Pastor Charles and Sue. That's my pastor, y'all. I love them so much. They have no idea. How much I thank God when he connected us that was a divine thing Amen. it was a supernatural thing and can we just let them know how much we appreciate them I know they don't they don't like it but they just have to deal with it <laughs> we love y'all and thank God for you And every time I'm telling you, when I come back here, they just look younger. <laughs> telling you, he, be, he even starting to dress to the point where I want some of his clothes. <laughs> I'll be asking, where you get them shoes? Where you get that shirt from? That's my man. And just to the worship team, and I know you got one more session to go tonight, but man, y'all have been on another level this week. And just all of the, this is my last time to thank all of those that have served us in any way. You know, Shay and Sean and the, look, the food has been on another level. <laughs> you know, I'm past the point now to where if I want another plate, I act like I don't want it. <laughs> you know, sometime I know my wife be looking at me like, hey, just, just, just calm down over there. And I'm like, no, no, no. I want some more and I'm going to get some more. Hey, Amen. <laughs> and so everything has just been amazing. Y'all are first class around here every year. And so thank you even to the sound people that have worked with me because I can holler at a moment's notice. And the camera people who have to chase me around just to everybody. I want you to know I appreciate y'all so much. All of that helps with the anointing. Let, yeah, let's give them all a hand. And um, I thank you. Now, we've been talking about the mysteries of Christ. And when, when I say mysteries of Christ, we've been dealing with the revelations that come with Christ, unveiling 
these revelations of him. And matter of fact, go to Colossians 1 and then we're going to go to Hebrews because this is the revelation that is the master to all of the revelations. It's like the consummation of what God was leading up to in Christ Jesus, Colossians 1. Verse number 26 says, the mystery which had been hidden from ages and generations but now has been revealed to his saints. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory, the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Pastor Keith, you're going to have to help me today now. You get rid of my hand this to you. No. I'm just, yeah. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in me, the hope of the mystery that had been hidden from all ages. You know, the moment Adam fell, God spoke in a mystery right there in the Garden of Eden. In Genesis chapter number three, God, God dropped a mystery off. And I, will, I, I just want to share what that mystery is. You don't even have to turn there. It's Genesis three, verse number Verse number 15, and he said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. And that word seed is capitalized, which means he's talking about Christ right here. And you will bruise and he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. The moment Adam sinned and lost that original state of, of essence and glory and authority and, and everything that God originally planned for man right there in that garden. God gave a prophecy about Christ. But nobody knew what he was talking about when he was talking about the seed of a woman because they were thinking naturally. But God says, no, I have a seed coming that is going to fix everything that just happened in the fall. And your Bible says, and in the fullness of time, I don't know why it took God so long. <laughs> Seemed like he should have fixed it the next day. But in the fullness of time, here comes Jesus, the seed of the woman that's going to correct everything that happened in mankind through that fall. And the Bible declares the whole mystery, the whole mystery according to Colossians was how God was going to get that Christ-like nature back in us. So when Christ comes back in us, it is the hope of glory. Can I tell you what glory is again? You, 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 you need to hear it again. Let me, let, me, let, let, me, let me get my phone so I can give you the definition of glory again. It, you, you, you know, this is, this is how you just get drunk again. In the spirit, that is. In the, spirit. the word glory, in the Hebrew word, it's the word kabod, which means weight. It means basically the, the, in, the, 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 the uh, you can't hardly even say it because it just means the heaviness of, of what God is, what he's worth. It means his manifest presence. It means him in all of his majesty. It means him in all of his inherent manifestations. So whenever God manifests himself, there's so much power, authority, weight to it. We call that glory. And, and so that's the Hebrew word, kabod. And then when you get to the Greek, it is the word doxa. And it means 
honor, renown. It means divine qualities, which means it carries a lot of the same words that kabod does. But then it also means opinion. It means judgment. And so, and so when you put those two together, it means that when you see these manifestations of God, in Christ, when the Bible says we beheld the glory, it means we beheld the original opinion of God, the original judgment of God for man. Oh my God. And when I said last night, judgment doesn't mean, so get judgment in a, in a, in a negative sense out of your mind. It's in a positive sense. Judgment means to, to look over um, facts to form a conclusion. <laughs> My God. It, it, it means to come to a conclusion about something. And God says, for your life, if you want to know the conclusion of my opinion about your life, look at Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the conclusion. He is the co opinion. He is the way God thinks about man. And the Bible says, and we beheld the glory in John chapter number one. And that's where we've been camped out in my humble estimation for too long. We have been looking at Jesus and saying, my Jesus, go Jesus, go Jesus, go, go. I mean, we read the Bible, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And let me be very clear. He is worthy of more honor than we could ever bestow upon him. But Jesus is saying, wait just a minute, though. I didn't do all of that just to be celebrated. I did all of that because I came to show you that this is really the glory that God has prescribed to you. Amen. And so while you're watching me, pay attention because I'm coming after disciples because the real mystery is not how you see me as a God man in the earth. The real mystery is how I'm going to turn you into me. Oh my God. It is me in you that is the hope of glory. And so that tells me the moment we got born again, what the Father was hoping for, the expectation, what Jesus was expecting was to see now this glory start to come out of us, which means to start to see us to walk. In, in manifestations of the original opinion and, and judgment of God for our lives. Lift your hands and say, glory is coming out of me. It's coming out of me. And then last night, I'm just recapping last night. And then last night we found out just what, how big God's opinion was about us. See, there's a verse that Brother Hagin taught us taught us all, I mean, when he dropped that revelation on the church about praying that, that, that revelation in Ephesians 1, about the eyes of our understanding being enlightened, that we may know the hope of his calling. But now this one right here is one that, that we need to pray and pray and pray because this is the one I'm preaching about today. He said, also pray that we would know the hope of his calling and watch this one. What are the riches of his glory? What are the riches of the glory? Watch this, of his inheritance in the saints. It didn't say pray about the saints inheritance in him. It said you need to get a revelation of his inheritance in us. My God, my God. Not just our inheritance in him, but his inheritance in us. We are his inheritance. We are his heirs. And we need to know just how mindful he is. Oh, what is man that thou art mindful of him? What are, what are we that God is so mindful of us? 
And I told you that God last night, that when God sent Jesus, he didn't just send Jesus to show us how much God thinks of us. He also sent Jesus to show us what God thinks of us. He didn't send Jesus just to let us know he's thinking about us and he cares for us. Yes, but he also sent him to show us just what he thinks of us. That he would create the whole earth and then put it under our feet. Oh my God. My God in heaven, it's too early to get drunk. I feel like Peter on the day of Pentecost. But I'm telling you, some, some of them, they were already drunk when they met us at the car. They were, they, were, they were already drunk. These two were already tipsy. They were already. <laughs> so Christ in us, the expectation of getting back some of this original essence to become children of God. Now, I want you to go to Hebrews 1. Oh, I mean, Hebrews chapter number two. Let's go just a little deeper. Hebrews two. Oh, Father, teach us who we are. Now, Hebrews is the book of declaring that Jesus was better better than the covenants, better than Abraham, better than the blood, better than bulls and goats, the blood of bulls and goats, better than the angels. And in this context, where I'm about to pick up, it's talking about how, how Christ was higher than the angelic rank. And so look at verse number five. It says, for he has not put the world to come in which we speak in subjection to angels. It's talking about, as I set this up, it's talking about the preeminence of Christ. How Christ is above everything. He's even above angels. Because God didn't create the world and then subject it to angels. He created it and subjected it to man. Hallelujah. But then man lost it and then Christ came. And so it's talking, it says, so because one testified in a certain place, and we know where that certain place is. It's in Psalms number eight. Saying, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you take care of him. You have made him a little lower than the angels. And of course, that word is Elohim. So you made him a little lower for just a little while than God. Now, this is, I want you to look how amazing this is because now the psalmist said this prophetically in Psalms 8, saying, what is man that you're mindful of him that you created him, you created all this with the work of your fingers only to turn it over to him and put it all under his feet. Who is he? My God. Who is he that you would do all of this for and give him all of that power? But then the Bible declares that he's actually testifying of Christ. Why is he testifying of Christ? Because he's testifying of the last Adam. He's saying that originally you created this earth, gave man dominion over it. Who is he that you would do all of that for? But then he fell and lost it. But then another man came. Yeah. Hallelujah. What is man? Jesus called himself the son of man. And so now Paul is picking it up. I believe Paul is the writer of Hebrews. If I'm wrong, I'm just wrong, but I just believe he is. Because you can't have that kind of revelation and not, and it not be Paul. But anyway, but, but anyway, he says, so, so this was testified in a place before in Psalms 8, that you made a man a little lower than yourself and crowned him with glory and honor and you set him over the works of your hands and you put all things under his feet in subjection to him. For in that he put all things in subjection to him, he left nothing that is not put under him. My God, my God. 
Now, I want you to grab this because we're talking about two men. In the Old Covenant, Psalms 8, he's talking about the original manifestation and creation of Adam. That was God's will for us. If Adam hadn't have fallen, Jesus wouldn't have come. He wouldn't have had to come. So he's coming to restore what was in Adam. We never got to see in Adam, in humanity, what it was like to have men and women in the earth with everything under their feet. We could have seen Adam and Eve before the fall, which it was our true identity and our true authority and glory that everything was under their feet. The whole earth was under their feet. Everything that creeped on their, all the animals, everything was under their feet. Had all authority, including that backslidden angel. Call Lucifer. He had dominion over him because he was locked in this earth realm. And I'm telling you, if Adam and Eve had did it right, he would have been stuck in a corner somewhere. And he would have never gained access into this earth realm to be able to pervert what God did. But he failed. And we lost that authority and dominion. And then Jesus comes on the scene. Hallelujah. And shows us what a man was like restored in that original glory. And this is what the Bible is talking about. All things were put under his feet. Now watch this. So now the original man lost it. Jesus Christ came to restore it. And everything is under his feet. But now look at what the verse says. But now we do not yet see all things put under him. But we see Jesus. Who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God might taste death for everyone. For it is fitting for him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many, 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 many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect. Somebody say, the captain of my salvation. salvation. To make the captain of our salvation perfect through suffering for both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Goodness, my God. Your Bible declares that Jesus, for a short period of time, came down from the glory that he had with the Father, came into the earth to enter into the rank and level of mankind so that he could suffer death for us. Now, this death for us is a spiritual death. It was so he could pay the price for the death of Adam's transgression, which brought us all into sin, which brought us all short of the glory, which brought us all into sin, consciousness and fear and shame and all of the things of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. We were we fell into all of that. Jesus came down 42 generations, came as a man, walked into the earth realm to show us our original identity and then die and taste death for us, which means he had the right to check for our ransom. My God, my God. And when he did, after he suffered three days and nights, the Bible declares that he became the king captain of salvation. Now what in the world does that mean? 
That means that Jesus had to suffer spiritual death. But it also means that he had to be the first one then that was resurrected from the dead. See, what makes the resurrection of Jesus so amazing is not that he rose again physically. Many people had did that. Many people were raised from the dead. Matter of fact, if it was just a physical resurrection, it wasn't even that spectacular because Lazarus was dead one more day longer than he was. <laughs> Lazarus came out after four days. Jesus came up after three. He didn't even have the most amazing natural resurrection. It wasn't that he came out physically. It was that Jesus was the first man to suffer spiritual death and get born again. And he had to die spiritually so that he could pay the price for spiritual death that Adam cursed us all into. Which means Jesus paid the price not for your body to just come back alive. Jesus paid the price so your spirit could come back alive. He paid the price for spiritual death. And when he rose again, he went into hell suffering as a sinner. But he came back out as the captain of salvation. The firstborn from the dead. God, the first one that went into hell, a sinner, and came out with the glory. He came out, and he didn't come out by himself. He led captivity captive, and Abraham came out with him, and Isaac came out with him, and all of the saints of the old covenant all came out with him, and he became the captain of salvation. We ain't talking about Captain America here. We talking about Captain Jesus. We, we talking about the captain that's going to bring something to the earth that the earth had never seen before. And that is spiritually dead people born again. So the Bible says he is the captain of salvation. Watch this, because I want to, I want to, uh, archegos is the Greek word for captain there. It is made of two Greek words, arche and gos. And arche means, let me, let me tell you what arche means. Arche means, this word captain, it means the first. It means the first in order, in time, in place, in rank. It means the beginning. It means the origin. It means the person or thing that commences something. Watch this. It means the first person or thing in a series. <laughs> salvation he said don't just look at me he said there's a series of them coming behind me oh, he said there's some more just like me coming I said he said there's some more just like me coming oh just get on your feet and shout it out just get it off of you. Oh, just get it off of us. He was the first in a line that's coming behind him, baby. And when he came out that grave, he knocked a hole right through death to start a series. Be you got it out? Okay, okay, be seated. He's the captain of salvation. 
He's the first one in a series to come. So that's RK. That's but Gauss. RK Gauss is the Greek word. So RK means that, and a Gauss means it means to take the lead. My God. Watch this. It means to lead by laying hold. <laughs> Watch this. It means to lead by accompanying to or into a place. It means to lead with oneself, attach to oneself as an attendant. <laughs> Which means Jesus says, I'm the captain of salvation. And when I rose, I rose to be the first one in a line that's coming in a series that coming. But he says, the way I'm going to be the captain though is I'm not just going to be raised again and then just leave y'all. He says, I'm going to lead y'all. Which means he says, what I'm going to do when I come out of this I didn't come out of this to be the only one. I came out of this to attach myself to you. Take you by the hand and show you how to walk in this. I came to grab your hand so that you could walk right in this. Which means while you're coming behind him, he said, I'm gonna pull you into it. I'm gonna walk you into this glory. that I died for you to have. It means he is taking us by the hand and walking with us into this great salvation. Oh my God. Somebody shout, here's my hand, Lord. Pull me into it. Pull me into it. Walk me into the glory. Walk me right out my natural mind and walk me into the spirit. Walk me into what you were created. Me to manifest. So Jesus says, I'm going to walk you through this. I didn't come out so I could just be preeminent. I came out to bring you out. And the Bible declares that's one reason he sent the Holy Ghost. Because he said he's going to guide you into all truth. And Rick Renner said that word guide right there means a tour guide. Which means the Holy Ghost says, uh, I've been sent down here to help walk y'all into this stuff. Why? Because you ain't ever been here before. Before you could walk in this dimension, Adam sinned. So you might not quite know your way around. So I've been sent to take you by your hand and walk you into truth. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? Truth ain't just when you state a known fact. Truth is reality, which means I came to walk you out of your fallen nature, which is really not reality. Your real reality is Jesus. Did you hear what I said? Jesus is reality. Jesus is the original purpose. Jesus is the glory. And the Holy Spirit says, I came, I came, I've been sent. By the, by the Father, I've been sent by the Son to walk you into this so that the captain of your salvation can walk you into everything you were just created into, recreated into, born into. And so your Bible declares that the captain of our salvation is not perfected or complete. Watch this. 
without you. <laughs> Jesus says, this is why I don't want everybody just celebrating me. He said, because I didn't do this for me, I did it for you. And everything I did ain't complete until you do it. It ain't finished until you walking on water. It ain't finished until you casting out devils. It ain't finished until you speaking to the winds and waves. It ain't finished until you got joy. It ain't finished until you can sleep through a storm. It ain't finished until you walking in everything I walked in. It ain't finished. And I don't know if we'll get to all of this on this side, but tell somebody I'm gonna walk as far as I can. I'm gonna walk with him as far as I can. I'm gonna walk with him as far as I can. Oh, take his hand. Let's take his hand and walk into it today. Woo! Boy, y'all got me preaching up a storm up in here. <laughs> Good God. So, so now, Jesus says, I came to start something. That's why he says, when I build my church, the gates of hell ain't ready for this. Because had the princes of this world known. in the hotel room I was like you know this is the last day I'm going to teach give me the teaching mic today I'm going to be calm <laughs> but I didn't sweat more in these last 25 minutes than I did all week long <laughs> because I feel something in my belly there's an awakening happening to who we are the captain says, take my hand, I'm gonna walk you into this, come on. We gonna start something. So now here's what we've got to do now. Here's what we've got to do. Let me give you these three points and then I'm gonna be done with what I've got to do. Glory be to God. So now, when we look at Jesus and we look at the captain of our salvation. And we look at this and we understand that he came to bring us into this. He's the firstborn among many brethren. He's not ashamed to call us brethren. Mm, 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 mm. And the moment Christ came into us, he's expecting now a hope of glory. Now you know what that means. I know some of you already knew what it means, but every revelation just, just stacks it on. He's saying, now that Christ is in there, let's start manifesting some of this original. Let's start walking in some of the things that Jesus did in the earth because he was showing us what we were capable of. So I said last night, the first thing we've got to defeat then is sin consciousness. Now I want to hit that for two minutes before I give you these three things because what sin consciousness did, boy, sin so damaged us. 
because every fruit, I don't even want to call it fruit, but I, I, the Bible calls it the works of the flesh. I like that. We're not going to even make what the devil did fruit. <laughs> he said the works of the flesh are these, and he names all of these symptoms that start coming out of the sin nature. And one of the chief things that infected us when we fell into the sin nature was fear. Fear in all its forms. Whether it's a phobia of the dark or spiders or snakes or whatever, or whether it, it manifests itself in doubt, anxiety, stress, and all of those things. So all of the manifestations of what sin did to us are the things we have to fight in order to walk in this new salvation. It's all of the things we have to fight in our minds because we fell in such a natural, sensual state of information and senses and now we've been born alive and the captain of our salvation is trying to walk us into the essence of who we were, were created to be and just like Peter we'll get so far and we'll stop so to the degree when he was walking on the water is what I'm talking about he walked so far and then he, he gets fearful And what Jesus is saying is that you've got to now renew your mind to the point where any manifestation of thought, feeling, any manifestation of appetites in your body, anything that has to do with that old nature, the moment it pops up, you put it under you. And he just said, no, 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 I'm not doing that. Why? That's sin consciousness. That came as a result of sin. Which means all of the things that came as a result of sin are always popping into your consciousness. The moment God speaks, the next thought you'll have is some consciousness of why you can't do it, why it won't happen, why you can't have it. See, all of that's really sin consciousness. <laughs> your life gonna be changed forever when you start seeing sin consciousness like that that this all of those thoughts are a result of sin being lodged in me it's a result of this fallen world and the things I've learned and taught none of that matters now because I got born again to come out of all of that I didn't get saved to fear If I was going to stay scared of everything <laughs> and you got the captain of your salvation in you saying, we ain't scared of nothing. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear what I said. Look at somebody and say, I ain't scared of nothing. Because there's no fear in you. There's no fear in the Christ in you. There's no doubt in you. So all of those things are just, they, they are, they are the, the thoughts that come out of the, the unrenewed mind, the residue of sin. And, and I'm telling you, Jesus, Jesus multiplied fish and loaves. And you mean we don't think he going to pay our bills? Now, what makes us start to doubt all of that? Sin consciousness. Or like I said last night, sinner consciousness. It means any thoughts, any feelings, any appetites, any emotions that I have that did not come from my new nature had to come from the old one. It's the residue of sin and its effects coming into my consciousness. 
and you got to fight that because that's what's holding us back. It's not the enemy. He's defeated. Matter of fact, there are going to be seasons you're not going to even hear from him. Oh, y'all don't hear that. <laughs> no, there, there, there are some seasons he going to roll up in your house. You're going to put such a whooping on him. He going to go back to, the, to Satan and say, don't send me over there. No, no. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. We're not people who are ran by the devil. We are people who run devils. We're the people who tell the devil, I wish you would. And the only reason you wouldn't think like that or act like that or be that bold or have that much faith would be sin consciousness. Some consciousness that the enemy is bigger than you. Are you kidding me? Jesus showed you how to deal with the devil. When the demoniac had a legion of devils in him. Roman legion is up into the thousands. And these ain't two devils. He, he, he got all kind of personalities that they're speaking through him. He cutting himself. You know, people can't bind him, can't chain him, can't do anything. I mean, just mad men until Jesus showed up. And when Jesus showed up, the devil said, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait a minute. Have you come to torment me? That's the way the devil ought to do every morning when you wake up. The moment you put your foot on the floor, they ought to start backing up. They, <laughs> oh, I said they ought to start backing up. Whew. Hallelujah. And the only reason we wouldn't think like that and act like that and walk in that kind of thought is because of some consciousness of the inferiority, the weakness, the something that sin did in us. So now that we are born again, Christ in you is the hope of glory. I want you to see this visual. It is like now that Christ is born in you, it's like a chicken, a little, a, a little chick poking itself out of a shell. Look at somebody say, you got to crack that sin nature off. <laughs> because it'll try to confine you when you got life on the inside of you that's ready to break out. When that little chick gets strong enough to come out of that egg, it start pecking and pecking and pecking and pecking until it breaks out. And that's the way you got to do sin nature. You got something so explosive on the inside of you, we've got Christ in us. But in order to get him out, you got to get that sin nature off of your life. And it's time for us to get strong enough to start cracking some shell on our minds and refuse to think that way anymore. It's time to start cracking. That's why when I hear people keep talking about their past, listen, I know it hurt. I know it was tough. I understand it. I'm not diminishing that. But can I tell you the only reason your past still bothers you is because you still in the past? Did you hear what I said? Get your mind out from back there and forget the things which are behind and reach for those things which are ahead. That's sin consciousness. Sin, sin consciousness does all of that stuff. It just, it just replays old memories of pain and dysfunction and hurt and fear. See, that's why I tell you, I'm going to keep hitting this racial thing. I'm going to keep hitting it until I peck and peck and peck and crack that shell off of people. Because they just want to keep bringing it up 
and bringing it up and bringing it up and people get more upset and more upset and more mad and more mad and then they back there way back in slavery and wasn't even there. Because that's the sin consciousness. That's the old nature. It likes to fester in stuff. It likes to keep you in bondage. It, it likes to do stuff like that. It likes bringing up the past. Anytime the past start coming up, you know you into sin consciousness. Did you hear what I said? Anytime all these things, so whether it's racial or something that happened to you, it could be something traumatic. It could be something in the past. Anytime the devil keep trying to bring that stuff up and you entertaining it, that's sin consciousness. Oh, I'm helping people today. And so we got, it's like we got to break out of the shell that's trying to confine us. We are now sons and daughters of the most high God. So now let me give you these three things because I'm going to leave you with some homework. There are three things I want you to major on. And so when you go back and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you're reading the captain of your salvation. Jesus is showing us our true glory, our true essence. He's showing us exactly what we were created to do. It's showing us the capacity of which we could do in the earth realm. Now, the only thing Jesus had on us, like I said last night, is he didn't have to come from the death side into life. He was born with life. We got to come out that shell. We got to come out of death. We got to get all of the ramifications of it off of us. But the moment Jesus comes into your heart, you ought to start breaking out of it. Breaking out of it, coming out of all sin consciousness, coming out of all weakness consciousness, coming out of all fear, coming out of all the things that came with the old nature. Every time it comes in your mind, just say, I, don't, I ain't even thinking like that. I ain't about to put up with that. I, I, I ain't doing it. Hallelujah. And so now Jesus came to show it to us. So that means what you see in Matthew, Mark and Luke and John. It's the true picture of what you're capable of in Christ. So there are three things I want you to be mindful of going forward in your life. Number one, the identity of Christ. Because now Christ in me is the hope of glory. That glory showed us our true identity. When I say identity, I'm talking about nature, I'm talking about character. I'm talking about the image. I'm talking about the life of God. I'm talking about eternal life that came into your spirit when you got born again. You got to learn now how to live by that. And you've got to be able to live like that when everybody else around you is not living like that. You got to be able to walk in the peace and joy and love and, and life of God in this dark earth realm because that is the light that God wanted to show. Now, let me ask you this question because it shows you your capacity. The Bible says Jesus was the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him, there was nothing made. And then the Bible says, and in him was life, and that life was the light of mankind. And the light shined in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. <laughs> Which means it ain't really working unless it can work in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> this, this when it kicks in is when it's exposed to darkness. So when trouble shows up, you just start shining. When darkness is around you, see, see, everybody around you can be mad and you just start laughing. Everybody around you.
time you can be upset and offended and you're like, I don't see no problem in it. Because people are trying to pull you into their grievances. Did you hear what she said about me? You tell them, yeah, I heard it, but forgive them. Let it go. Let, come on. What you mean, let it go? No, I'm going to tell them. <laughs> no, no. What you got on the inside of you shines in darkness. Even if you happen to get a bad report or, or come up on a devastating situation, shine. You got something in you that the worse the situation gets, the more peace you can have. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it can happen. It can happen. But you have to chase this glorious identity. So say this after me from this day forward. I declare my identity is the same identity of Christ. And I walk in that image and that likeness and that nature. Hallelujah. Number two, authority. Oh, my Lord. Boy, if I had time, we'd be here till three o'clock. No. <laughs> Go back through Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John and look at your authority. Because if Jesus did it, he's doing it with man's authority. He had to do it with Adam's authority. He couldn't do it in God's. He couldn't just come into the earth. Remember, he humbled himself. He gave all that up and came in as a man underneath that authority and glory of a man. And when you look at Jesus, you are looking at the extent of our authority. This is why words are so important. Because your mouth is the outlet for authority. I want you to start believing that what you say comes to pass. <laughs> Oh, yes, it will. I said, oh, yes, it will. Mark 11, come on. Dad Hagen, Pastor Cowan, God sent these men into the earth realm to bring these revelations to the church. Now you understand why you have to watch your mouth and why death and life is in the power of it because God put everything under our feet. We are in authority down here. Authority over the earth. We have authority over demon spirits. And we even have authority over the angelic realm. They've been sent to work for us. So your mouth is a weapon of mass destruction. Because your mouth is how you release authority. And you have got to look at Jesus and be like, oh my God, I can speak to whatever is in the earth realm. Remember, he put the whole earth under his feet. The authority, we have no idea. But oh, we finding out. So my wife and I have been literally like just putting this on practice for about the last year and a half strongly. Put something up and talk to it. And know that the moment you open your mouth, things in this realm start moving. The spirit realm kicks into motion and starts rearranging things. Now, the only time this becomes difficult is if you have to deal with people. <laughs> because you can't always get people delivered. You can't always get people blessed because they keep doing stuff. They cancel out what you're trying to pray. But you can start stuff in intercession that so puts things, I'm telling you, we gonna mess with everything. 
We going to mess with everything. We might as well send a memo to all of our family members in case they watching, whether they know it or not. All of them coming into the kingdom, whether they ain't got no choice. We going to release so much spiritual activity. We are going to stop demons in their tracks. Just like Jesus did. I mean, he cast them out, your Bible said, with a word. When he cast that, d- those devils out of the demoniac, he didn't quote no scripture. <laughs> he didn't go through no prayer. He just said, go. That's your authority. Not putting up with it. And anything that would make you doubt that is sin consciousness coming into your mind. So just rebuke it. Just feel it. it doesn't matter whether you feel it or not. It's yours. Start pecking out, cracking out of that shell. Start just cracking out of that sin consciousness and getting it out of the way. Let your spirit out. Start talking to it. Hallelujah. I'm not going to preach on all these. I just want to give them to you. And then the third one. Identity, authority, and number three, ability. Jesus shows us what is possible to do in the earth realm, anointed by the Holy Ghost. Good God. My God in heaven. Now this shows you that Jesus came to earth as a man because he had to be anointed. If he'd have came as God, how God going to anoint God? You understand? This shows you that he had to have some supernatural ability in the earth by the Holy Ghost. And when he came up out that Jordan River and the Holy Spirit came upon him, everything you see him do is showing us the extent of what the Holy Spirit can do through us. He wants to use you. Because the anointing comes when you go into ministry mode. It goes when when it's time to to impact some stuff in the earth realm, to to change some things, to rearrange some laws, to overturn some natural stuff. The anointing comes when it's time to add the super to the natural. And Jesus walked around under that anointing until he healed the sick to the point where the dead was raised, to the point where such supernatural things were done. And we know how he did it. He did it by the Holy Ghost. That the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me. Hallelujah. Oh, and, and the captain of your salvation is saying, I want to walk you into that same anointing. That's why he meant it when he said, the works that I do, you will do also. And greater works than these shall you do. Why? Because I'm going to the Father. What does that mean? I'm going to raise you up with me I am going to secure your place with me in the heavens as a son of the most high God and everything you saw me do you're going to do it cause I did it with your glory so today the captain of our salvation is saying, don't just praise me, don't just celebrate me. Walk with me. (laughs) The captain of your salvation is saying, let's not just preach it. Let's not just sing about it. Let me walk you into it. Let me lead you into it. Let me lead you into it. And I believe in Nashville, we found some people 
who are wild enough to take the hand of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost and say, let's walk it out in the earth realm. Let's walk it out. Let's show how much glory we can manifest in this earth. Get up on your feet and just start walking around. Just start walking around. Just start. I'm going to walk this thing out. I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to live in it. I am going to take the hand of the captain of my salvation and I am going to see signs and wonders. I am going to walk in peace, joy, love. I am going to be healed. I am going to release healing. I am going to see miracles. I am going to cast out devils. I am going to live in the power of the resurrection. Oh my God. Come on, sing that song for me one more time. Y'all come on, sing it over us one more time before we leave. We're going to walk in this. Pack all the way out of all that sin consciousness. Break it all off of us. We are no longer slaves to sin. We are no longer sinners. We are no longer fearful. We believe we are who he says we are. We are children of the Most High God. for us to have such a great salvation can we just thank Jesus who came down from heaven to restore us unto our glory and I'm telling you we owe him church to press into this as far as we can we owe it to him we owe it to him to take his hand and walk in it. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, thank you. Identity, authority, and ability is our true inheritance. Come on, sing it over us one more time. We're going to receive this down in our spirits again. Everybody at home Yeah.